Destiny, Out of the Wild, a novella by J.A. Parry Bruce. Chapter 6 What was that? I think. Pain gnaws at my gut. Vision's blurry. I'm moaning and grunting, though I'm trying not to. I can't move. Stomach feels like a great weight's been placed on it. Pilo is protecting me, his body arched over mine, like a shield. Through the pain, I try to replay the last few seconds. I lost sight of Lycus when I fell. When I looked again, he was covered in flames. His body glowed, and he had a gun in his hand, but it wasn't the one he carried. He fired so fast, and the fallen all died. The sound was terrifying. He killed the last two arm with his knife. I watched him. Felt a little sick. Maybe it's because I've been shot. Maybe. I wince and cry out again. Pilo. He's been watching Lycus too. Turns and looks at me. I see anger and fear in his face. Hold on, he says. He looks around. No more fallen to fight. The old hunter looks blown out. Winded. He's wheezing and his eyes have sunk into his skull. Whatever he did took it out of him. There are little lights dancing around Lycus' head. I try to focus. They're like tiny suns orbiting him. He sees them, reaches out and grabs one, holds it close to his face. He smiles and puts a thing in his pouch. The other follows. Pain makes me close my eyes, grip my teeth. Not done that in a while, I hear Lycus say. Closer now. I sense him kneel beside us. We need to get her to the underground. I hear the others gathering around. Buras' leg drags through broken stone and long grass. I'll slow you down, Buras says. Me, Ryman, and the boy will clear up here. See to the others. Go now. I feel arms around me. Lycus is lifting me up. He doesn't even groan. Thank you, old friend. I snag my arms around Lycus's neck. Hold on as tight as I can. I look up. See his face. And beyond it, the blue sky. Pain when he moves. I moan. Try to bite my lip, whimper. It's too much. It hurts. It hurts. The sky is so bright. Lycus looks down at me. I stare into his eyes, bright and dancing. Hold on. Darkness surrounds me. The jostling wakes me. My eyes flutter. Feels like I'm floating. Brightness above. Lycus's face. Feels like a hole has opened in me. I can't think straight. Try to concentrate. Lycus's face, clouds overhead, his arms are strong, wind whips through what's left of my hair, he's running. Try to look around, pain, moaning, hush, he says, two sets of footsteps, Pilo, he's alive, happiness, drifting, not far now, Lycus, took me away from home and now I'm dead, is Mama dead, Gamma, little Rico, no, and neither are you, not yet, little ghost. Felt it against my back. Not so hot now. Sky so blue, running so fast, dying so slowly. Burning breath, dry cough. Lycus looks at me. Eyes are glowing on fire. I scream. It's dark. My eyes are open again. I think we've been open for a while, but I didn't see anything through them. The sky is darker. Must have been moving for a while. Feel my head starting to fog already. Pain's still there. I cry out. Almost there, like us again. I see buildings all around us, ruins mostly, and trees. Gamma's face appears in my head. And London burned, she says. Can't get my eyes open. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. I strain for breath. It won't come. I feel Lycus's grip tighten. He runs faster. We're going down now. An old staircase. An ancient tunnel. I force my eyes open. Pull knife-sharp air into my lungs. Feel it cut me all the way down. My mind is like the knife and I know I'm going to die. I don't want to die. I won't let you. Little ghost. I feel its heat again. Choke down another razor breath. 
Like his turn to corner, all is darkness. He knows where he's going, doesn't slow down. I see shapes in the darkness, dim reflections where light's diminished finger strokes certain surfaces. One looks like a ball. The traveller? I watch it get closer. Then it's past. We're still moving. Not the traveller. Just a thing. And never mind. The light is getting fainter now. The darkness is almost absolute. I try to imagine the light I saw, the light I've felt. Pain stabs at my belly, but I push it to one side. There's light in me. They've said so. I reach down and try to find it. The water burns at my neck. There's nothing left to banish now. And you can't protect me from this. I know it's true. I close my eyes and I imagine the sliver of my light shining brightly in my heart. But, like the shining orb and not the traveller, the light passes, grows dim, fades. An interlude in dying. And darkness consumes me again. I don't know where I am. It's dark here. There's a heat around me, like a circle. I look into it and see a shape. A ward within a ward. Great protection. The circle pulses out and, in its wake, I see shapes. I don't understand them. They are recognisable shapes and geometric anomalies. Pyramids and trapezoids. And a great grand sphere. Then something with nine sides but twelve faces, and another with one face but great depth. What does it mean? There's a blunt-ended star nearby. It shines and emits its own pulse. I feel a pulse wash over me. It makes my ward sparkle and flash. Glee makes me laugh. I'm naked but not afraid. I see faces amongst the shapes, people I knew. The fallen I killed. A deer. The glassy memory of a fox's eye. Dead and filled with worms. What am I doing here? Where am I? The star speaks. You are here, alone. But I have come to find you. Why have you come, I ask? I can help you. I will take care of you. Take me where? To life. To the pain. To your love. I've had enough of pain. I turn and walk away. Nearby there is a tree. I sit under its shady canopy and play with blades of black grass. There is light, but I cannot see what is making it. It's cold, hard, unfeeling. The star ghost sees me. I run. I run from the ghost star and from the pain. Run until my feet bleed tarry darkness. You don't know what I am, I say. The star is before me. The ghost is all around me. I know enough. I've seen the darkness, I tell it. It looks through me and into me. It has known the darkness too. You've seen fear. You've seen the absence of light and the failure of the traveller. You've seen what's left of you all. I despair. You've seen nothing but a grain of yourself. It holds out a long, thin hand. The fingers are cut off at the first knuckle, and there's an eye in the palm. Will you show me light? I ask it. Will you banish the darkness? I cannot do either. It waits for me, hand out. I hesitate to touch it. I'm different, I say. Knowing the truth, I'm alive. You're alive, it blinks. But so are we all, in a way. I can help you see the light for yourself. Will that do? I cannot see it now. I look all around at me. There is light, but not light. I can see the tree, the buildings, the shapes have become the world, and the people, they are many, but they are dead. You aren't looking right. I look right. See the ghost, the star, the little light. I see a speck of brightness in its dark eye, and I'm afraid. Yes, it hisses. You see a light. I reach into it and pluck up the light. Like a streamer, it billows from the star ghost. It shimmers and shines and gusts of breath blow. The stream is into a million ribbons of light that would wrap around the world and make it gleam of life. But I am an obelisk of darkness in that world of light. I can't give it to you. The ghost is all around. It is the light. You must take it and choose. I can't choose, I tell it. 
My hands are not my own. I feel I am fading. A chasm opens up below me. I am turning into darkness, into ash. The ghost is before me again as I saw it when I saw it first. Scratches and nicks and peeling chips of paint, and from them light shines through. Now, Lycus's voice. Come on, Pirlo. I can't. I will my arms to move to take the blade of light that is growing up from beneath my crumbling legs. A finger twitches, but it moves so slowly. How nice it would be to not move. How nice not to think. How nice to let go and just float within the darkness, within the darkness. Do it, a deep voice, my father's voice. My arm moves, I am scared. My legs are nearly gone. A shadow moves up my body and I feel the cold pouring over me. There's a hole in my stomach and it's bleeding darkness. I push my hands into it and pull out sticky handfuls of tar. I pull and pull and pull, but there is always more. The ghost stands nearby. Lashes of light dance around it, flickering out of the gaps in its shell. Mortal and immortal. Powerless and powerful. I allow my arms to be entwined with the light and plunge my wrapped hands back into my stomach. This time, I pull out a clot of darkness. It moves and snaps at my fingers. I wrap the light around it and it screams. I feel something in me die. The ghost expands and I am walking on a bridge of light. Though there are spots of darkness at either end. I lay down on the light and stroke it and welcome it in. I feel strength and power. I feel love and life. I feel bitter loss and a terrible anguish. I feel...